welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you saw my last video where I was covering the Retavis RT97 analog repeater, uh, portable analog repeater, then you may be interested in seeing this one. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a tear down. It's not particularly hard. There's four screws on the top here, which you need to undo first. They are actually spring loaded, which really kind of makes it have a good kind of quality feel. You don't have to remove the bolts all the way, but just enough so that you can open up the case. Now, once all four of them are loose, then you can open it up. It's a bit like a, a bit like a clamshell. And as you can see, you've got a cable coming from the main unit to the display. If I just kind of just turn it around, you'll be able to see the cable connecting to the display board, which also has the buttons on. So one of the first things that we notice is that big black duplexer module. Now this is a notch filter where the high side will notch out the low side and the low side will notch out the high side. In the top right hand corner it looks like we have some kind of power board which also has some logic because it has some cables which goes off to the main TEX RX unit on the left there with the big silver plate. We can also see from the main transmitter receiver unit there on the left we have two SMA connections coming out. One will be for the high and one will be for the low side so that's in effect is the transmit and receive. There will then be an SMA cable which goes from the duplexer off to the SO239 connection where you plug your antenna. Now one might think that this unit actually just contains a couple of handheld transceiver boards. Well, let's take a look inside this unit here because I was actually quite intrigued myself as to what was in there. So let's take out these zillion screws and, uh, and see what's in there. Okay, so we're pretty much there. Let's reveal the truth, what's inside. Okay, so definitely not a couple of handheld transceiver boards. What it looks like here um, from first glance is that we have an RX side and we have a TX side, which is pretty much what we'd think anyway. That whole unit is big, one solid bit of, uh, I think it must be aluminium. It's uh, one solid unit, There's uh, it's solid underneath as well. And by the looks of it, the left hand side will be the TX um, because there's actually, if you can see, there's a white, there's an area where there was a white uh, liquid or white substance, which is, uh, I believe, uh, like a heat transfer compound. So it uses part of the lid as, uh, as a heat sink. So that must be the transmit final output. Let's have a bit of a closer look. Now one of the things you'll notice is that on the duplexer there's a sticker with a low and a high frequency. This is because these these duplexers are actually set from factory. So when you order one of these, if you're going to order one of these, say like direct from Retivis or a, or a distributor, then you need to specify which frequencies you want to use the repeater on. Because uh, even though you can go ahead and program it using software, you will need the duplexer actually set technically um, for the frequencies you need to use because it is a notch filter uh, for the TX and, and RX. If you have the equipment and the know-how obviously you can do it yourself but it's not something that you can just do through like a through like a menu. Now to program this uh, it's quite easy so the first thing we do is we plug the USB cable into where the power jack goes it is a, um, a dual socket you don't need the power at the same time it gets its power from the from your computer. Now on the other end of the programming cable you've got the USB. As soon as you plug it in you'll see that the display will light up. That means that it is now connected to your computer. So let's just whiz over to the software, to the programming software and I'll show you how you use it. 
But you can go ahead and download the RT97 software from the Retifice resource website. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find that. So this is the RT97 software. Um, remember this only has 16 channels and it's not going to be overly complicated. So this is actually going to be quite easy to show you. Now the first thing you need to do once you've got the repeater plugged in and the screen on the repeater is illuminated, what you should be able to do is come up to where it says set, select communication port and select the right COM port for the programming cable. In my case, I've got COM7. Now I'm just gonna do a quick read from the repeater just to make sure that the communication is working. The progress bar will go up and that is it. It's extremely quick. Now you can see here it's populated the 16 channels with each of the channels that is currently stored in the repeater. So the fields that we've got across here, we have an RX frequency. So that would be the transmit frequency that your handheld radios or the or your mobile radios will be transmitting on and the receiver will be listening on. You've then got TX frequency, which obviously is the frequency your handheld radios or mobile radios will be receiving on and the repeater will be transmitting on. We also have the option of enabling CTCSS or DCS on encode or decode. We've then got TX power, low and high, and we also then have a modulation type, whether you're gonna be using wide or narrow. So you can create up to 16 channels, like I mentioned before. That's the maximum number of channels that you can set for this repeater. And each of these channels is changed by using the up or down buttons on the front of the repeater. You'll actually see the frequency change on the display as you go through them. Now, one of the other important settings that you may wish to play around with if you're having issues is within the function setup, we have a squelch level. Now, this shouldn't really matter too much because if you're using CTCSS or DCS, you may not need it, but you can actually set a squelch level here. Don't forget to click OK to apply those settings. Now, if you want to write this back to the repeater, it's very easy. We click on program and then we select write data and then we click the write button. And there you go, it's extremely fast. Well, there we go, guys. That's a look inside the RT9710 watt analog portable repeater. And if, like me, I'm actually quite impressed with the build quality, and it was nice to see that it's not just a couple of cheap handhelds bunged into a box to make a repeater. It actually has a quality notch filter at the cavity and it has a dedicated transmit and receive board. So I think it's overall, it's a pretty useful piece of kit. Now the next video that I'm gonna make on this product will be actually taking it out and I'm gonna deploy it somewhere and then I'm gonna get a couple of friends and we're gonna go and see how, see how well it works when in use. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and until the next one take care